In this video, we're going to review the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3 contemporary lens. Coming right up. What's up everybody? Phil Bull City Pictures here with another review. Today we're looking at this beast of a lens. This is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3 DGOS HSM Contemporary. <laughs> That's a mouthful. This is a, a lens that can be used on both full frame and crop sensor can cameras. I've got it here on my Nikon D7100. I use this camera primarily for uh, bird shots, but it can be used for sports. It can be used for a lot of different things. And this is, when they say this has image stabilization, they mean this has image stabilization. <laughs> this is uh, very, very good image stabilization. It's probably about four stops or so in my experience, but we'll get into that. In this review, I'm going to show you the lens. I'm going to show you a little bit, tell you a little bit about it. And I'm going to take you into Lightroom and we'll look at some of the pictures that I've taken with this. I've had this for just about a year or so now. I paid uh, just under $1,000 for it. And again, this is the contemporary version. It, it's fairly heavy. It weighs 4.3 pounds. Um, that equivalent on a crop sensor, which is what this D7100 is, the equivalent focal range would be 240 to 960 millimeters. So you've got great reach on a crop sensor. On the full frame, it's 150 to 600. It, the minimum focus distance is 102 or 110.2 inches. Uh, it's got 20 elements and 14 groups. And if you add the lens cap, this thing becomes a bit of a beast. I use this one handheld, actually, and I use it on a tripod. And handheld, I can probably carry this or use this for an hour or two without really getting too tired. The build quality is really nice. It's, it's a plastic, but it's a high quality plastic. And you've got a few buttons and dials here. You've got one for your autofocus, one for the zoom range, whether you want it to be full zoom range or a, a not, not the full zoom range. OS has three different levels, and then you have a customization. This is also part of the system that uses their new dock, so you can go and, and dock this and upgrade your firmware. You can also tweak it if you need to find you need to tweak it. The, there's also a lock mechanism as well. So that locks it so that the lens won't creep. And this is a fairly heavy lens. And I think without that lock button, it would creep quite a bit. The zoom, fairly smooth. And you can see this is extended. So it's not quite twice the size, or maybe it's about twice the size or twice the length when it's extended. And again, that ranges from 150 to 600 millimeters. I found the autofocus to be fast. I found it to be reliable. I found it just this camera in general to be, or sorry, this lens in general to be a real joy to use. Again, the, the image stabilization is incredible. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'll take you over to the computer um, and pay attention to the data, the metadata on these pictures, because I'm able to handhold this at sometimes shutter speed as low as 120, 125th and get pretty sharp shots. So I'll show you some examples of those slower shutter speeds. I'll show you some examples of some of my bird shots. So we're going to take it over to the computer. I'll show you some of those pictures and we'll come up with my thoughts. We'll wrap it up with my pros and cons. So here are some of the pictures that I took with this lens. It's a picture of a dove. This is from last year. I'm kind of sitting out on our deck. You can see that this is just the raw file, a little bit of processing done, but basically so I want to show you how sharp this is. We're zooming into 100% and you can see that that eye is tack sharp. We can even zoom into 200% and you can see that this, this is a very, very sharp lens. This one was taken with at ISO 400 at almost 400 millimeters f6.3 and 1 250th of a second. So theoretically, if you follow the reciprocal rule at 400, you should be at 1 500th or so with your shutter speed to get a sharp shot. And you can see here at 1 250th, this still came out what I consider to be very, very sharp. Another one here at one, one twenty-fifth of a second. This is a bluebird. Again, you can see the, the color's good. The contrast is good. Sharpness is good. Everything in this lens is really, really stellar, I would say. And 
And I will point out that these were also taken through my sliding glass door. So it's not just the lens itself, it's actually going through my slider. So this one was taken at 400 millimeters, one four hundredth. And again, as we zoom in and see that detail, you can see that that detail is, is pretty, pretty darn good. Another one of a Blue Jay. And again, zoomed in, you can see this one was taken at one two fiftieth of a second. And even though this is a lens that starts at f5.6, you can still get some fairly creamy bokeh. And it, it's amazing. The distance to the subject certainly helps as far as the bokeh goes, but you can see that this is, the bokeh does not look terrible here. And, and this is a really busy scene. Those are uh, blueberry bushes in the back. But you can see this cardinal having a little snack over here at two to one. Again, it's, it's still very, very sharp. And this was taken at 1 3 20th of a second. So I, I really, really like the lens. I like everything about it. The autofocus seems to be fast. Shooting these birds, they tend to move very quickly. And I really don't have any complaints about the performance of the lens. Certainly it's sharp enough. So those are some of the pictures that I got with this lens. Again, I've had it for about a year or so. Start off with my pros. One of the pros is that image stabilization. It is incredible. As you saw, it's some really slow shutter speeds that still turned out sharp. The reciprocal rule says that if you're taking a picture to get a sharp shot, your shutter speed should be the reciprocal of your focal length. So at 600 millimeters, you should be at 1 750th of a second or so. And you can see I took some of those pictures at 1 1 25th, 1 1 60th, which kind of breaks the reciprocal rule, but that's because this image stabilization is so good. It's a fairly solid lens. It's well built. It's also, I think, a good value for the money, although it is $1,000. I think what you get for $1,000 is, is quite a bit. The con, the main con, really the only con that I found with this lens is the fact that it's heavy. It's 4.3 pounds. Um, so it's not something that you're going to lug around all the time necessarily. And, oh, and also the fact that that minimum focus distance is 110 inches. Now, I guess you wouldn't expect the close minimum focus focal focus distance with a lens like this but this one seems 110 inches you have to be fairly far away to try to get a shot that would be of something that you know maybe if you want to get closer to a butterfly or something like that where you have that one of those macro type lenses where it's really not macro but allows you to focus closely this is not one of those lenses so this lens would is definitely designed to be for for subjects that are far away is filled with Bull City Pictures, this review of the Sigma 150 to 600 lens. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. If you do subscribe, please click on that bell icon. That will allow you to be able to be updated or uh, have a notification whenever a new video comes out or whenever we go live, we'll be doing some live stuff here in the near future. Also, I'll have links to everything that I use down below, including this lens. If this video helped you in any way and you consider buying this lens, please click on that link below. It won't cost you any extra and we get a few pennies on the dollar to help support the, the channel. Phil with Bull City Pictures, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.